But what we're going to be covering today, again, it's the guide to directed garment printing. Uh, we're going to be covering the equipment that's, that's essential to the process, why you should purchase the Epson, who should own one, and what it's not really good intended for. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a couple of poll questions here. Um, first being is how many of you own a directed garment printer? And another is what type of decorating do you currently offer? So we'll let those questions come through. Okay. Okay. I see a little more than half of you guys own a uh, direct garment printer already, so most of you are familiar with this process. And as far as decoration methods go, we've got this coming in as well. Seventy-one percent of your screen printers. Seventy-one percent embroidery. And seventy-one embroidery. Everybody can transfer. And everybody's doing heat transfer. Great. Twenty-nine percent other. And twenty-nine percent other. I'm assuming probably sublimation, um, things like that. So uh, this is going to be a great webinar for for all of you because directed garment fits with each one of those uh, decorating methods. It's a nice complement to them, and you know later on in the presentation we'll show you why. Um, so what we're going to do first, uh, we're going to go over the equipment you know, that we're going to be covering in this. Uh, we have here our uh, Viper XPT 6000 pre-treat unit, the heat press, and obviously the directed garment printer. Now two of these are absolute necessities when it comes to directed garment printing, which I mean, I don't think I have to say the garment printer, but that's one. And number two, the heat press. Now when I say it's necessary, the, uh, the pre-treat unit it's, nece it's not necessary, but it's definitely beneficial to give you the most optimal print because you're laying down an even amount of pretreat for the white ink, uh, which again we'll see during the whole process. Another, f another method of pretreatment that folks use is just something as simple as a spray bottle with a solution in it, and they spray it on the area that they're going to print. And a little more advanced, you know, than the spray bottle, folks use a Wagner spray gun where you know they basically load it like it's paint, and they're spraying it on their shirt as well. Some of the disadvantages of doing it by hand, spray bottle, or you know, Wagner pretreat is you're not getting an exact amount over the same uh, areas of the shirt, you know, which could lead to faulty prints. You know, so but in the today, what we're going to do is cover the process of how each of these all work together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ask another poll question here before I move on to the next, which is, how many of you are familiar with the direct garment process? My guess is most of you with the printers you know, are pretty familiar with it. 67% are, 33% are not. Okay. All right, that sounds great. Um, is there, uh, do we have any chat questions initially right now that anybody would like to cover? Okay, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into the process of you know, the pre-treat, um, or, or I'm sorry, the, the direct garment printing. What we're going to start off with first is a white t-shirt. And now decorating white with direct -to garment is you know, the easiest, easiest form of direct -to garment printing. And why is that? Because there's no pretreatment involved. All you're doing is printing directly to the white shirt. You know, so, but how you start up, what we're going to do is we have our white t-shirt here. And Joe's going to do a follow behind for me here to get a little close up. The first thing you want to do when you're printing a direct -to garment is pre-press the shirt. And what this is going to do is it's going to do a couple of things here. One, it's going to get out all the wrinkles of the shirt and any moisture that's trapped in there that could affect with the ink adhering to the shirt itself. So we'll just do that for a quick you know, four to five seconds to get that nice and flat, wrinkles out of it. And one other important thing that it's doing is when you hit that heat press down to this shirt, it's laying all the fibers down in one direction. You know, should we load this in without pressing, what's going to lead to is fibrillation. And what fibrillation is, is it's little threads sticking up you know, in the shirt, which you won't even really be able to see them. And when the threads are sticking up like that, when the print's going over it, it's going to lead to white areas where the ink isn't actually laying down on it, just on top of that. 
So what the heat press does is lay those all down nice and flat, so you're going to get a nice smooth print clear area. So once we, once we have it off of the shirt or the press, we're going to go ahead and load it into our printer. So we'll go ahead and dress that shirt on there. Make sure we're straight. Get everything down underneath the platen. And then we're going to go ahead and use the hoop here to lock this down so we get a nice uniform flat area. Okay? So we have our shirt loaded in there and we're going to get ready to, to, uh, to print. So as far as the design goes, what we've done is we've designed this in CorelDRAW. Uh, you could also de design in Adobe Illustrator, CorelDRAW, and also Adobe Photoshop. And then once it's designed, you're going to bring it into a RIP software. Today, we, you know, Epson comes with Garment Creator, which is its own RIP software, which is basically doing all the you know, behind the scenes work in your print to make it you know, look great on the printer itself. <coughs> So what we, we have uh, our design. There's a couple of ways you could print as well. You could hook your Epson directly to the, to the uh, computer, or we're using a thumb drive, which is the easiest way to do it. We have our print files loaded onto this thumb drive, and we're going to go ahead and load it in here. I see we have a question. Manmar does not offer a use size nano T yet. What ring fund brand are you suggesting to use? There's a number of different, well, the question was uh, a, a small size ring spun t-shirt. Um, yeah, I don't know any off the top of my head. I, I assume Sandmar would have one, but uh, probably a quick Google search. I know Hanes makes some nano tees, um, uh, ring spun, but any ring spun is going to give you your best, um, best printing quality because, you know, it's a lot softer weave and closer knit together so the ink's laying more uniformly. And that brings up another good point as far as the shirts that you could use. I mean, you could use any 100% cotton t-shirt, even 50-50. With 50-50, there's still that um, polyester fiber in there, which the ink doesn't, you know, jive with all that well. You know, so you're not going to get the best quality of print on a 50-50 t-shirt. And again, let's say you have 100% cotton beefy tee. You know, there's so much cotton in there and so fibrous that, you know, the ink isn't going to show up as well as a ring spun is. So ring spun is definitely going to give you your best printing quality. Oh, so... Oh, my printer shut down here. Another question? The Steve Jackson video shows entire tea placed on a platen. You threaded it. Advantages of each method? Okay, good question. Uh, that question was, um, you know, threading the garment. Uh, well, we'll just go ahead and show that again. Threading the garment on the platen, which is basically, you know, putting it through like you're dressing it, or laying it over the top, just the whole thing. I like to thread it, and the reason being is because sometimes, you know, you dress it on there, there's a wrinkle in the back of the shirt that you may not even see. And like if I zoom in here, you can see that one right there, and that's coming from the back of my t-shirt. You know, and you don't notice that right away, and then you go and you print over that area, you can see a little defect in the print right there. So why I like to thread it is because you're going to get, again, kind of the same idea when you press it, you're going to get a nice flat print area to give you your most optimal print. So that's why I like to thread it. You know, folks do it both ways. It's really a matter of personal preference, but that's the reason why I like to thread it again. It's because I think you get the best print because it's nice and flat. One more question. Is there a preferred file format you like to work with? File format, um, when you're designing, you want a transparent background, which is typically either a TIFF, a PING, or a GIF. Um, typically, I use ping, you know, but any of those file formats will work when you bring it into your RIP software. And once into your RIP software, it generates a print file that you're sending to the printer either via your laptop or what you're saving to the USB jump drive to go ahead and print. So ping, TIFF, or GIF, anything that supports transparency is your best file format. We're good? Okay, so I think the questions are all answered, so we're going to go ahead and continue with the printing of our white shirt. Okay, and since I'm using the jump drive, I could just go ahead and access this from my menu of the Epson, and we just hit the menu. We're going to our USB file list, and we're going to select a print file, and there we have, I'm printing our tattoo for white shirt, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Click OK. It'll show us a brief preview of what the graphic we're printing. And also you could set a counter, which is nice. So if you had a 25-piece run, 
and you know you may have lost count halfway through, and this one's going to give you a nice counter to show you where you're at. So, but for, the, for our purposes here, we're just going to print one, click OK, and we're going to go ahead and click the blue print button, and we're ready to go. And so, while this is printing, I welcome you know any chat questions as well, because this one will probably take you know probably about a minute to print or so. So, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Right now, the printer looks like it's going through a quick uh, you know, clean cycle before it prints. So we're shuttling in now for the printing. So yeah, printing on you know white T-shirts is, is is the fastest, easiest, and you know least amount of cost in the shirt because you're only printing on white white T-shirts. Obviously, the cheapest to buy. Um, you know when you're printing on white T-shirts, you're not using any white ink. And again, faster is because it, all it's doing is printing the color. It doesn't have to print that white underbase. So once this is done printing, our next step, it's going to be to take it to the heat press, which is then going to cure that ink. So, you know, essential piece is the heat press. I mean, that's, any of you guys, you know, familiar with even screen printers, heat transfer, obviously, you know, most of you already have a heat press, so that, that's great. Okay, we have a question. What resolution do files need to be? 3,000, I'm sorry, 300 DPI? The question was, uh, what is the preferred DPI? Uh, 300 is a, a great DPI to go with, but you know, 180 is, is, is pretty good as well because sometimes if you get uh, too high DPI, it oversaturates, oversaturates the shirt with ink. So um, I'd say 300 is on the high end, but it'll definitely work. Uh, 180 is a, is a pretty good one as well. So we have our uh, shirt finished. We took the hoop off. And now we're going to take this shirt off and go ahead and take it to our heat press to cure. Okay. And, okay. and again, I'm going, I like to dress the platen of the heat press as well, kind of for the same reason I do with a direct to garment. But you could do it either way. You could just lay that uh, you know, shirt on there entirely, but you just want to make sure you know, that you don't have any wrinkles through that because of that will show up through, through the uh, ink while it's drying. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and take our craft sheet. To, to cover that print area, okay. And one thing definitely recommended on your heat press when you're when you're doing a direct garment is an upper platen cover. This is going to protect the internal workings of that heating element, you know, from that moisture and you know steam coming up in there and you know eventually eroding you know the inside of the presses. So this platen upper platen cover is a great thing to protect that. Okay. And when you're curing direct garment ink, you know, with the Epson ink. We're uh, doing it at a 350 degree Fahrenheit temperature and for about 60 to 65 seconds. And on the cure time with the ink, you want to use a very, very light pressure on your heat press. Probably a one on our Hotronics auto clamp here. Okay, so during this time, the, the ink is drying and curing so that it's going to last uh, through washings. And through washings, you know, we've uh, you know, we've done 30 plus washings uh, so far on a lot of these shirts and they've, they've coming out looking very well, you know, as if the day they were printed. So, uh, any, any new questions out there? Sure. Okay. Oh, there's one right there. Okay. Two. <laughs> can you cure in a conveyor dryer? Yes, you can cure, uh, cure in a conveyor dryer. Uh, you know, a lot of folks do that. Um, you know, so if you have that as a screen printer, I'm, I'm assuming you are. Um, yeah, that's definitely a viable method to, to dry. And question two? Sometimes on the craft paper, I get a bit of ink transfer, light. Mm -hmm. Please discuss reuse of the salt brand paper. You can reuse the craft paper, and again, over time and amount of pressings, you are going to accumulate some ink on there. 
Um, you know, so it's just if you see a, a lot of ink on there, you know, I would just go ahead and change out the craft sheet because you know if you have the ink on there and you and you and you're curing this a lot, you could notice that show up on your next print. So there we have our finished and finished and dried shirt. Drop my craft paper there. Sorry. And we have here. And there's our print on a white t-shirt. Very vibrant, very soft. Okay, and we have another question, Beth. What do you consider as light pressure PSI on an air fusion craft? On an air fusion, I'd probably go, I'd say 20 PSI is nice, because you know, that's probably the, the least I think that it can go. You know, so 20 PSI would be perfect. Any other questions? Okay, um, well that's, I mean that's printing a white t-shirt. I mean the most basic form, the easiest form of decoration there. Um, but so now everybody prints on dark shirts now, so this is where, you know, the, the, real, the real benefits are of the Epson and having all three pieces of this equipment. And so what we'll go ahead and do now is we'll go ahead and grab my black rock shirt. And this, printing on black, we're going to have to use the white ink and that is where pre-treatment is necessary. And again, like I said, you could use the most simplest form to pre-treat, which is a spray bottle, which you would, uh, you know, have some sort of area for you to do that. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, my uh, platen for my auto pre-treater, you know, just to kind of show you. You could use the spray bottle and just spray over the areas of what's going to be the print. And again, this isn't the most beneficial way because, again, you're not going to be able to get a nice uniform amount all the way across the shirt. So there could be some areas where there's more here and a little less here. The white ink's not going to look as well because there's less pre-treat and it's not enough to bond to it. And so we're going to go ahead and use our auto pre-treater here, which is nice because, again, uniformity across the area that you're going to treat. So again, I, again I'm going to dress this platen for the same exact reason I do the DTG and I do the heat press again to keep any wrinkles out of it so you're getting a nice flat area to treat. But you know some folks just lay it on there which is fine. You know, so whichever is your personal preference. So okay. And the Viper XPT6000, this is your top of the line, fully automatic, everything is controlled. I control the length of it. I can control the width of it. You know, so if I only want to pre-treat this area right here, I could do that. Or if I'm printing the whole area of the shirt, I could do that as well. I'm also setting the amount of grams I'm putting on here um, and everything for that there. So you're, you know, there's some cost savings here uh, for you when you only want to do a left chest, full chest, whatever it may be. So to operate this, we just hit our green button to take it through. And it'll spray the pre-treat across the, the full area of the shirt. Okay, so now we have our pre-treated shirt and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a standard paintbrush and I'm going to paint this to spread this across the shirt uniformly so we have a nice even amount of distribution of that pre-treat to give us our most optimal print. And some folks like to use a paintbrush, others like to use a paint roller. And again, I like to use a paintbrush because I feel it gives you the most uh, evenly spread out. Okay. So once we're done here, we're going to take it again to the heat press to cure this pre-treat. One nice thing about the pre-treat is you could do this in advance. So you could you know, do all your pre-treating in one day. So you have a 100-piece run you have to do. You could do all the pre-treat in one day, cure it, and set these aside in a you know, big plastic uh, airtight bin. And then when you're ready to bring them out, you print the next day. Throw them in your heat press, lay those fibers down again like we did with the white shirt, and you're ready to start printing. So using the heat press to cure the pre-treat, we're going to use the same exact time, same exact temperature, but now instead of when we're pre-treating, instead of using a very light pressure, we're going to use a very heavy pressure on this. Okay. Yes? Same Any question? Pressure, same pressure question for the air I'd say anything above 70 PSI is going to give you a nice firm pressure for, for that. So we're going to go ahead and on here, we're, we're probably over around an 8 or a 9 on this. And so why we're using heavy pressure on the pre-treat? Because pre-treat is the glue for the white ink. 
And basically, it's going to lay those uh, fibers down again. Like I talked about fibrillation before, it's going to lay those and glue those fibers all down so that you're going to get a nice solid area for your white print. And you'll notice all that steam coming out. Again, that's the pre-treat curing. And that's another important reason why you want to have that upper platen cover on your heat press anytime you're doing direct-to-garment. Any other questions, Beth? Zero. Good news, I don't see any more steam coming out. Yeah, so here we have our nice cured pre treat area. And sometimes what I like to do is just put that press down lightly again. So that way, sometimes there's still a little bit of steam and moisture trapped in there. If you don't see any steam coming out, you're good to go and ready for print. Okay, gonna take this off our press. And we're gonna go ahead and load it back onto our platen. Okay. My hoop. Place that back on there. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And we're going to print from our USB drive, same way we did before, but instead of selecting the white, we're just going to do our tattoo. Click the OK. And it shows us a brief preview again. And our blue button to print. Oops, hit OK. Then print. Okay. So printing on a dark shirt, what it's going to do first, it's going to lay down the white ink for the, for, for the base so that the one that prints the color on top is going to be nice and opaque and look very vibrant. And again, there's another question. If pre-treating in advance, mm -hmm. do you heat press in advance or prior to print? If you're pre-treating, the, the, the mm -hmm. question was pre-treating in advance, do you heat press, uh, what was it again? I'm sorry, Beth. Do you heat press in advance or prior to Okay, it's do you heat press in advance or prior to print? You do both. Anytime, if you're going to do your pre-treating the day before, it, once that shirt's pre-treated, you're going to do that heavy pressure, 350 degrees for 65 seconds, you know, to basically seal that pre-treat in and cure that. But anytime, anytime you're going to, if, if it's the next day, you're still going to want to load it into that heat press because some of those fibers could still come up. And so again, that heat press right before you print is going to give you a nice smooth surface there. And, uh, you know, somebody asked the question of tunnel drying, uh, you know, uh, the screen print. You can do the pre-treat. I recommend the heat press on that one, though, you know, because you're basically gluing those fibers in with that pre-treat. And so as you can see here, um, the white ink is being laid down first. Yes? Is there any clogging problem with white ink? With white ink, you know, there's always going to be a clogging issue due to its makeup, but uh, we're going to cover that area here once, once we're done printing. You know, so we'll get to that here shortly. And once the white's done, you know, we're going to go ahead and now it's going to print our colors on top. Okay, another question? Can you share the image work setup for the dark colored garment? Screenshot and email, perhaps? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, we could email some uh, further information because once, once the once the webinar is over, um, you know, we'll have your info so we could send out some additional information from our rib to the garment creator rib and even this webinar here in around seven to ten days because we are recording this. You know, so um, this is something you can watch later on in time. Um, nice thing about the image works, you know, since that question was asked. Um, it has, it's one of the only RIP softwares out there that has a free trial. We're offering a 30-day free trial on the Imageworks, you know, to see if you like it. And if it's something you like, you know, I mean, you can purchase that after that 30 days is up. You know, me, I've just been using, you know, I've been pretty happy with the garment creator uh, that comes with the printer. You know, it gives you a nice optimal print. Now it doesn't have sort of the features that the advanced RIP software does. What the advanced RIP software has, I mean, it has the capability to customize your cues. Uh, you know, so if you're printing on five different shirts, you know, whether it's 100% beefy tee to a ring spun to even a 50-50, you could set those cues up with the settings so that you know, you, it takes out all the guesswork. You just know you load it into that cue and that's how it's going to print. And Beth said there's another question. 
I've been experiencing a strange effect on my print on dark garments. Have you experienced body colors where it looks like the color has a flaky effect after curing the ink? Flaky effect after curing the ink. Well, that, that could be a number of different reasons. Um, it could be uneven pretreat on the area, or it's fibrillation typically is when you're seeing white areas in your print. Can you print on polyester? You could print on 100% white polyester only. If you are printing on white polyester, like I said, it has to be white, and it's a necessity that you pretreat white in that instance. Otherwise, it's going to look very muted and you know, just not going to look all that well. So. And anything dark polyester, no, you can't. Unfortunately, not yet. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody's going to come up with an ink formulation that's going to work on polyester. And once that happens, you know, I think direct garment's going to be definitely the, you know, the most optimal form of decorating. Okay. So once our print's done, again, we're going to do the curing of the ink. We have that loaded. Cover with our craft paper again, and we're going to cure this for the same time of 350, or I'm sorry, same temperature of 350 and the same time of 65 seconds. But again, we're going back to a light pressure, which one or two would be fine on autoclam. And again, if you're using an air operated, 20 psi is very good. Okay, another question. What is the preferred amount of free treatment to be used on a dark garment? I am using the Viper One machine. Viper One machine, the proper amount of pretreat. We've kind of landed on anywhere from 35 to 50, uh, a setting on the XPT 6000. This one, I'm do, using a 50. And I've found one nice thing is Epson has their own pretreat. Um, versus some of the others on the market. I, I think the nice thing about the Epson is there's, you're never really oversaturating it. You know, I've, I've used some of the other, one, other ones on the market, and sometimes if you overtreat, you don't get that same bonding that you do with the Epson, even if you do overtreat. Another question? Is it necessary to use craft paper with a hot flat cover? I always would, yeah, because I think a lot of times with a Teflon cover, what happens is, is it sometimes glosses up your print a lot. So I like craft paper because it still gives it that nice matte finish that we're all after once we're decorating a shirt. Now, if you're after a glossy look, a Teflon sheet will do the, it's the same concept, but it just glosses that over the print. Okay, and there's our dark shirt. Right, now that's printing a white and a dark colored garment. I'll go ahead and switch, switch camera angles here. So, do we have a question here with Beth? Can you use butcher paper? Can you use butcher paper? Um, no, I don't know how to accurately answer that question. I mean, you probably could, but with it being uh, paper and white, it may, be, it may pick up more ink than you know, a craft paper or a Teflon sheet. But I've never tried it personally, so. Okay, do we have any questions on the whole process from pre-treat to pressing to printing? Anything out there left? Okay, uh, we're going to do our next poll question here, which uh, number three is, how many of you are familiar with the patch history and maintenance and clogging issues of the DTG? Six, I'm sorry, 70% yes, 30% okay. no. 70% yes. 30% no. Okay. Well, Directed Garment has had a long, long history of maintenance issues, clogging issues, nightmares, and you know, folks that have bought them when they first came out, even as recently as you know, three years ago. Um, you know, a lot of times in the conversations that we've had with customers, that you know, they basically turned into a paperweight because they can't get them to work anymore. Well, that's one of the benefits of having the Epson F2000. Is they kind of they kind of hung back here for the last 10 years or so and kind of learned from everybody's mistakes and watched all these things happen. Um, some of the past problems were the white ink was clogging, uh, just having to use it every day. If they didn't use it every day, you know, it just was clogged, it wouldn't work, you couldn't clear them up. And the reason was being that those were all happening, it's not so much the printer, the print heads, anything like that, it's white ink. The way of white ink is made up, it's a titanium oxide you know, particles and things that are in there. And if it's not constantly circulated or used, 
those pigments fall to the bottom of the ink lines. And when they start to do that, they settle. Once they're settling without usage, they gel. It's basically like cholesterol in the ink lines. So that just gels over time. And then eventually, it's so gelled, it clogs up that printhead. Or it clogs up that line and then dries out your printhead. And you know, it's basically unrecoverable. So what Epson has done you know, is they've created an enclosed circulation system in their white ink channels, which is there's two white ink channels in these machines. So what that circulation system does is that white ink that's always in the tube, it's constantly being circulated through that to prevent that you know, ink from clogging or settling and then clogging. Now, and that's even without usage every day. Because um, I mean, our printer here, we've, we've gone probably eight to 10 days without any sort of printing. And now when you come in, you turn it on, you do your test print, there's not gonna be any white there. But the nice thing, you just do another a normal clean or two, and those white ink channels are you know, basically free and clear like it was the, the first day you inked it up because of that circulation system. And then we have a question. How can you stop fibers showing through on a large all-white print on black shirts? A large all-white print on black shirts. Uh, as how to stop the fibrillation. Um, I mean, I'm just, what I would do is, I mean, if you're getting a lot of it on a particular white shirt, uh, it, it was it... Can I ask a follow-up question? Is it 100% beefy tee, or is it a ring sponge shirt that you're using? Okay, so that's probably the biggest reason you're seeing that because it could be, maybe it's a Hanes Beefy Tee or a heavyweight cotton t-shirt. It's a heavyweight cotton t-shirt, you know, a lot of times it's tough to get some of those specs out of there because there's so much cotton content in there. You know, so, you know, you could either, you could remedy that a couple of ways. Um, try pre-treating that white shirt because again, that, that, that pre-treat could glue those fibers down so you don't see it as much, um, you know, or, you know, maybe not offer that one, that, that style of shirt, and move towards a ring spun or a lighter weight cotton t-shirt. Okay, um, all right, so we were talking about the, the ink circulation system. So that's one of the biggest advancements that Eps, this Epson has made, you know, to, to basically make this nearly free and clear of maintenance, other than, you know, your standard normal cleanings, um, you know, head cleanings, capping stations, things like that. Um, and, you know, one thing I'll say is, Right now, my, sh my uh, printer, it's saying that we need a tube wash. You know, we've been ignoring this here for you know, probably three or four weeks. And you, know, you see the types of prints that we are getting. Um, another question? Is it better to use 50-50? 50-50, again, uh, with direct-to-garment ink, it likes natural fibers. And with that polyester content in there, you can print on 50-50, but just know you're not going to get quite the vibrancies if you're printing on 100% cotton due to the synthetic fabric of polyester. What is your experience using Epson pre-treat on a light or white garment? Experience on using pre-treat on a light or white garment was the question. Um, what, what, what I've noticed when pre-treating white shirts, you're going to get your most vibrant print and most durable print. You know, so it is a nice option. You, it's, it's kind of an upsell in my opinion. I don't, I don't know that it's all that necessary to do white, you know, but you will get an uh, expanded color vibrancy and a little bit more durability as far as washings go. So you know, it's, it's always an option to pre-treat white, but it's not a necessity. How often do you have to clean? How often do you have to clean? Um, now these go through its own automated cleaning cycles. Every time you basically you turn the machine on every day in the morning, you're going to do a normal clean. Because odds are the white's not going to show up. And that's just, again, because of those white inks settling. But, but the normal clean with this that you do every day, you know, that brings those back up. Um, you're basically shaking the cartridges periodically through the day. Again, because that ink will settle to the bottom of the ink cartridge. And again, you're just shaking that up to mix those uh, particles back up there. The previous question of um, Epson pre-treat mm -hmm. on lighter white, the same gentleman asked, same settings as dark? Same setting as dark. You, you probably don't have to go as heavy on pre-treating with light. I mean, you, you could probably go with as little as 20 on your XPT 6000 when treating white. And, and even a spray uh, by hand on that one's probably, it's a nice option for whites. Does that mean physically take out and shake out the ink cartridge? Yes. So basically when you, it, periodically throughout the day, I'm going to switch cameras here for Joe to follow me here. 
you, know, you just basically take out this, the white, and you're going to shake it this way. You can turn it over and do it again. You can do this for about 30 to 45 seconds. And again, you're typically doing this daily. And that's all it takes. We'll just put that back in, and you know they're ready to go. Um, as in, with other with other printers on the market, oh, I'm sorry, we have a question here. Um, what if you go on vacation for 14 days? Is there an auto clean? There is not. You know, those are all performed uh, manually. Um, so if you're going to be going on vacation for that amount of time, you know what folks have done is they perform a tube wash before they go away. And then they just don't put any white, white ink back in it. They could just leave that cleaning uh, fluid through there. And so that way there's no, no clogging of the white ink there. But we have, we, we have let this thing sit for 10 to 12 days without printing. And you know, granted, it's not the most optimal conditions. But again, with the Epson, it's not going to be something that you're you know, going to lose your printer over. OK. Um, and as far as maintenance goes as well, you asked about normal cleanings and you know, periodic cleanings there. With most other printers on the market, whether it's the Brother, the Anajet, the T-Jet, you pretty much have to perform a tube wash once a week. And what a tube wash is, is you're flushing all the white ink that's in the lines, you're flushing that out. I'm going to flip it back to me here. The tube wash just flushes all the white ink that's in the line and basically clears it out so it even takes anything that's settled, takes it out of that line, pumps it back up with cleaning solution, and then you're refilling it back with ink. Typically, most printers on there, like I said, you're doing that every week. With the, with the Epson, you only have to do that once a month. Tube wash once a month, that's it. Um, and as far as maintenance costs and running the Epson, that tube wash once a month is about $45. So you factor that in. And overall per month, you know, with normal cleanings and thing, your maintenance cost on ink is probably around $120 a month with the Epson. Any questions? OK. And so we've learned about the circulation system. Um, but Epson also created their ink. And they've also created the print head, and all this with mind of printing on apparel. You know, the, the Brothers, the T-Jets, the Anajets, those are basically what we like to call them Frankenstein printers. They've taken parts of Epson printers that were designed to print on paper, put them all back together, and to print on shirts. So, I mean, that's not the best way to do it. Epson, you know, they've developed this thing from, for about three or four years from the ground up with one thing in mind, and that's to print on apparel. Okay, um, you know, so with this, why you should choose the Epson is for those, those, those number of different things. The, the enclosed circulation system, the specifically designed printhead, the specifically designed ink, all for one purpose. And that leads to worry-free maintenance, worry-free operation, and perfect prints every time. So do we have any, uh, any questions here? Okay, so uh, what we're going to cover next is who should own a direct -to garment printer? A lot of, a lot of folks and you know, guys out there, your screen printers, your embroiderers, your heat transfer, well, this direct -to garment fits right up your alley here. Um, you know, go ahead, we have a question, Beth. What kind of warranty? Uh, on the Epson machine, there's a one-year warranty, and the great news is that includes the print head. So under that one year, um, if the print head goes bad, anything goes wrong with the machine, Epson also guarantees they're going to be within your facility should somebody need to come on site within 24 to 48 hours to fix that machine. And if it is the print head, it is covered under that warranty. The warranty can be renewed for a total of three years, so you can renew it two more times after the first year. And if you don't use that print head in the first year, it carries over to the second. So you essentially have two print heads uh, on two years of warranty. And so it doesn't carry over to the third, you know, but you do have that. So. Um, you know, it's the best warranty definitely in the garment printer and the response time with Epson within 24 to 48 hours, you know, that's, that's, that's unheard of. Okay. So you're a screen printer. Why do you want to get a direct -to garment printer? You know, screen printers, they like volume. They like the same design, you know, in, you know, four to six to eight, you know, depending on the size of the screen printing press, maybe 10, 12 colors. Um, but where this direct garment fits nicely with the screen printer, now you don't have to turn away short runs anymore. You know, if you get somebody that comes in, a little, little league ball club that only wants 12 t-shirts, there you go. You know, you can turn these quickly and easily in as little as a day, you know, for that t-shirt team, or uh, for that ball team. Um, let's say you had a 500-piece run. You did it. They come back to you, you uh, a month later and said, you know what, we need about five more of those same shirts. You've already washed those screens or you already put those away. Load it up on your garment printer. 
I could have that to him again in a quick turn time. Um, if you're doing photo quality prints, you know, the family reunion group photo. Now you don't have to load that in your screen printing press. You, you pop that file in your garment software, load it on your uh, garment printer, print full color uh, quality photos that you, that with this machine. Let's see. And, and also, you have no color limits anymore. You know, gradients, fades, you know, a thousand colors, it doesn't matter. Now you could load that on there. You don't have to worry about your screen setup. You don't have to worry about the mess, you know, things like that. Just a nice option there, you know, for any screen printer. Uh, any, any questions? Okay. Um, another, another ideal deal market for a direct-to-garment printer is if, you have, if you're like a kiosk operation out of a mall or um, something like that. But okay, I'll pause here. There's a question. How about walking through doing a complete front and then a complete back? Do a, a complete front and a complete back? Sure. I mean, I could take the, the I'll go ahead and do that here. I'll have. I'm, prepping, I have one more. It's going to be this. I'm going to print the same exact file because that's all I have on my uh, drive right now. So but go ahead. Let's go with the question first. Can you explain the tubes and bucket below the printer on the cart? The tubes and the bucket below. That's just the waste ink container. Uh, so that's where all your cleaning, when the, when the machine goes through cleanings, that's where the ink goes. When you do tube wash, that's where the ink goes. That's where everything's done when, uh, through, the, through the maintenance. Okay. So how we would do a back of the shirt. So we already have our front print. So again, we're going to go ahead and load it into our pre-treat. And this is another good reason to thread your garments. So if you are going to do the back of it, we could pre-treat that where it hasn't been touched so, you're, so there's no chance of oversaturating and things like that. So let's go ahead and do our pre-treat on the back of the shirt. Okay. Go ahead. What is the maximum principal area? The maximum printable area with the garment printer, it's a, with the Epson, it's 16 by 20. Okay. So we have our shirt back pre-treated, so we'll do the same. Okay. Okay. Take that off. Go to our press. Pressure on here. Use my craft sheet. Questions, Beth? Nope. Okay. So we see our steam still coming out, curing that pre treat. Yeah, those of you doing garment printing now, if you don't have one of these upper platen covers, I'd, uh, I highly recommend you get one of those. <coughs> Even the, in the inks, the pre-treat, you know, this whole process, I mean, it doesn't leave off any, any sort of foul odor. You know, no, no ventilation is going to be required, anything like that. So that's a nice thing. Okay. Make sure there's no more steam out of there. Okay. Go ahead and take her off. And back to the garment printer. Put it back on. Close our hoop. Okay, and the platen I'm using right now is uh, it's the 14 by 16 area. The largest again being a 16 by 20. There's also a 10 by 12 youth platen available, as well as a 4 by 4, which is designed for sleeves. Any questions, Beth? Okay. Oh, we have a question. What are your recommendations for disposing of 
free treatment and ink waste as well as used ink cartridges? Um, I mean, the used ink cartridges we've, we've just been throwing them in the garbage. Um, and pre-treat, just, you know, again, it's just basically salt and water. We've been just using the sink. Anything else? Okay. So we're doing the black. It's laying down our base layer of white first. And you know what? It actually, yep, okay. Just making sure that I did. I thought I might have selected the wrong file. But we're good. Mike? Yes? Does the machine come with all those flattens? Does the, ma the machine comes with the 14 by 16 only. The 16 by 20 and all others are uh, add-ons. The 14 by 16 accommodates, you know, nearly any, nearly any print area um, where you'd want the um, the 16 by 20 is obviously if you're doing a, a double XL, triple XL oversized garments, even uh, you know, probably some hoodies. You know, if you're doing the backs of hoodies, stuff like that. Go ahead. Question, Beth. If you print on pockets or sleeves, do you need to do anything to ensure the print surface is level with the printer opening? With the, if you're printing on a pocket, that obviously that's you know that's raised, you know then you know if you're just printing on the front. The nice thing about the Epson, it has adjustable platen height areas, so you can adjust that so that you can lower the print head so it doesn't affect the uh, yeah you know, lower the platen so it doesn't hit the print head. And it's just you can even use the four by four you know to position it on there you know for a more accurate print you know but there's no need to just by lowering that you know you'll be able to print on that pocket. Because uh, within the Epson, there's uh, you know a laser targeting system in there. So you know before it goes to print, it uses that laser to determine if it has enough space to print on that. And if it doesn't, it'll stop you until you need to lower your uh, platen height in order to print that properly. And I've even seen that happen. If you let's say you, I mean you really want to saturate that white, you do two three passes of the white. It'll even sometimes detect it because of that. You know, it, it's really nice with that too, so it prevents any kind of head strikes and you know scratches in the print head. And the settings we're using in Garment Creator for this particular print, it's just the base standard settings. You know, I didn't really, I didn't jack up the white or any of the color. You know, this is it's Garment Creator does a great job. You know, at even the standard settings. Uh, had we bumped this up, you know, you could uh, add an extra layer of white for more opacity, and you could also bump up the color to get you a more more rich uh, uh, color vibrancy there. Question. What is the estimated consumable cost per shirt, not including the shirt and labor cost? Break it down, please. White shirt. I would say on this full color print right here, as far as our ink cost, you're probably around 275 to 325 is a is a good average for one printing with whites or I'm printing on a dark garment. Uh, the pre-treat area on this, you're probably around 45 cents. You know, so all in all, you're around four bucks for you know for a full black T-shirt. And for a white, you know, there's no pre-treatment, so you take off that 45 cents. Um, and there's no white ink, so you're cutting your costs in half. So printing on uh, a white shirt, you may be around a dollar fifty for a dollar, you know, depending on you know the saturation and levels that you use. One of the nice things about the Epson as well, um, it it keeps that track for you. You can print out your job log, and it will tell you how many cc's of white, how many cc's of cyan, how many cc's of magenta that you use for each particular job. So you could even go and break it down to the penny if you had to. And uh, Going on to the RIP software, the ImageWorks software that we offer, it will output the, the cost of the job for you as well on the fly. So we have our back printed and same process again. Go ahead, Joe, grab that for me. Thank you. Put it back on there. We'll cover. We'll reduce our pressure. And cure for the 65 seconds at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And while that's curing, we'll go ahead and show you just the uh, the height adjustment of the platen. You can see here we're set on a three. So you can just loosen this platen you know, here. 
and then you can just lower it, you know, all you can go down, I think it's a setting of an 8, or, you know, to raise it, you know, to, you know, the closer you are to the print head, the most uh, quality you're going to have in your print. So 2 or 3 is typically where we're set, um, you know, when printing dark garments on a Nano T. And putting a beefy T in there, or, you know, even a hoodie, you know, they're much thicker, so you're probably always going to have to, to lower that down slightly as well for those types of uh, applications. Okay, and the change of platen on this, like I said, we have our 14 by 16 in here. Changing a platen is very, very simple. You just simply pull that out. And I have a 16 by 20 here. And we'll just, just pop it back in there. And there you're, you have, you've changed out your 16 by 20 platen and it has you know, a matching hoop. And so when you change platens, all you do is you go in to your RIP software and you tell the RIP software what size platen you're using and it adjusts your print area based off of that. Question, Beth? What does the printer do if you run, run out of ink during a job? That's a good question. I, uh, I don't know what it does. I would assume that it would stop and have you put the new cartridges in, but I don't know that for sure. My apologies on that. I, I've never actually ran out. Um, I would think it was going to prompt you to pl place the new cartridge and it's going to continue about its business. I don't know that 100% being true or not, but again, I can find that out in emails. Uh, I could send that to a question out for you with some further information on the RIP and you know, printer itself. But that is a good question. Thanks for that. Okay. So we have our cured back print now. We have a print on the back. And we have the print on the front. So front and back printing, no problem at all. Okay. I'm going to switch back to, to the main view here. To, any, any questions thus far? You know, after that? Okay, I think we left off. We were talking about why screen printer would want these. Uh, another another great operation is is if you're operating a kiosk in a mall. Um, again, this is a great area for you to have one of these too. You know, somebody comes up to you, they're doing their shopping, they stop by you, they, saw, and they print them a shirt, come back in a half hour after you're done with your shopping, and get your new shirt. And again, it's a nice opportunity for people printing family reunion photos, things like that, because it's quick turn time, very easy to do. You know, on the spot for you. Do we have a question, Beth? When you load a shirt, how do you determine where the print will start? That's uh, in the RIP software. You know, when you change your platen size, it's going to change your print area, and basically how it, it's, it's going to lay out a square for you, and that's going to represent your front of your shirt or the back of your shirt, and it, it, it does a nice job too that usually the three fingers down from the collar is where it's going to start from where that square is. Okay. Um, another great operation for uh, direct -to garment is if you're an online retailer. Again, kind of the same reason for um, a kiosk. I mean, you could offer any sort of customization, one-offs, and also offer quick turn times, um, unlimited colors. So, you know, if you have your online site, people could just pick one shirt, order one, or you know, customize it in any sort of way to make it unique to them, so they're not wearing the same thing everybody else is. You know, load it into the garment printer, design it whatever they want, and print it for them and offer to them in a quick turn time. So you load the, so you load to the collar right at the end of the flat. That's what I've done, yeah. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll bring Joe back over here, and just load a shirt in here. So I typically load the shirt. I'm just going to leave that 60 by 20 on there. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for the reminder, Joe. Switch back to Joe's camera here. Okay. So let me load the front. So I'll pull it past, and so I want to have my center of the shirt in the center of the platen, and then I'll just pull it down and I'll lay that right over. And so when you have that down there, that collar's not going to interfere with your print, but based off where that square is in your shirt, I didn't adjust it anywhere. It's, it's three fingers down from basically the, almost the start of that print. And that was just importing it in, and it knew that based off the size of the platen I was using. And then you could do the same for the back. Maybe you just spin this around. Well, easier. And do the same thing. You know, pull it up. 
you know, so you can get the center of that, and then you could just pull it down. And threading a garment when you're printing on the back of the shirt is ideal as well, so you don't have this collar you know, interfering with your print area right here. You know, so if you were doing you know, somebody's name drop here, and you didn't thread it, you'd want to make sure that this collar wasn't underneath that print area, because it will give you, you know, slightly uh, discolored print and, you know, probably different color variations there because of that little hump in the design there. Okay? Remote. All right. Question, Beth? What is the expected variance from screen print to digital? If I run a 500 piece job and mm -hmm. then a customer asks for five additional pieces, mm -hmm. and I expect it to match without adjusting the art file? 100% exact, probably not. You'd probably still have to make some color adjustments based off of that because it, you know, unfortunately that's just any kind of printing, whether you're trying to match screen printing with a digital print uh, from, a, let's say, a wide format printer or even a transfer that you may have used. There's probably going to be some color variation there due to that. Could you please show, could you please show a four inch left test logo? Um, Fortunately, I don't have anything right now uh, you know, designed and ready to go. Um, but what you know, what I could do at the end, I could provide my um, you know contact information, and we could do another you know you one-on-one -on -one kind of video thing to see specific applications. Should any of you want to see anything further and in more detail and more specific, we could, we have that capability for you. I think she meant line it up. Line it up. Can you tell on there? Sure. That sure. Now. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, you're going to line, you know, your your garments up, and typically the same way every time. You know, so if I'm going to load this, and I'll still do it the same way. You know, but if I'm going to do a left chest, you know, I'm probably going to move it over a little bit more, and then again, you're going to have to place that in your. Um, in your RIP software, a certain amount of placement down and to the right, you know, based off where left chest, because typically left chest, you're going to measure from the collar down to about the middle of the sleeve, you know, for your left chest placement. So you do that within the RIP software because it's going to give you a nice grid of where you're at. You know, so the left chest, you're typically printing probably about right here. So you lay that up, lay that out in your design software, not so much when you put it on the platen. All right. Um, so we've, uh, you know, we've covered, you know, the, you know, who should own one, how how the whole process works with one another, and each piece of equipment. Let's uh, let's take a look at what DTG is not really a good fit for. What it's not a good fit for, it's anything that's not cotton. You know, you're probably going to get 50/50 at best. You know, with directed garment printing. Uh, yes, you can do 100% white polyester, but any other sort of color polyester, you can't do. Uh, nylons, you can't do. Leather, you can't do. Um, you know, so if you're wanting to decorate a wide variety of fabrics, you know, this isn't really the best option for you. Um, you can do teams, team wear and sports wear, but again, we're going to go back. It has to be 100% cotton. You know, with performance or with team wear these days, nearly everything is polyester or nylon or some sort of dry fit. Under Armour, you know, which again, you know, this isn't the, the most optimal way to do because of the ink limitations currently. Um, and then what you'd want to do in that one, you know, it's you're going to want to get a different type of printing, which is uh, digital printing with a Roland Versacam or a, a Muto or Mamaki, a solvent-based printer, or using uh, CAD prints from Stalls or Transfer Express and things like that. So, directed garment printing isn't 100% there yet for to, to cover all your needs. You know, so that's why it's a nice fit to anybody who's offering heat transfer, to anybody who's offering screen printing because you're filling any kind of voids that you may have, you know, for one or like especially if you're doing heat transfer, you're doing if you wanted to do a full heat transfer logo. It doesn't feel all that well. So you have this garment printer to do that full front and it's going to feel like a screen print and you know nice and soft and comfortable for people to wear. So, um, you know, if you want to look further into decorating, you know, other fabrics with performance wear, nylon, things like that, um, tomorrow, Josh Ellsworth, he's uh, doing a webinar at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, all about decorating performance wear and all the various different methods. So, um, I think we, uh, 
you know, we covered uh, nearly everything here for you. Um, so I like at this time, I'd like to see if there's any any further questions. You know, feel free to ask them. You know, we we have a lot of time left. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little short. So if anything out there, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, we have one coming in. Thank you very much. Oh, but we, I, I definitely thank everyone here for attending. It's, it's been a pleasure presenting for your folks. Um, we look forward to having you again in our next webinar. I know Josh will look forward to signing up for his tomorrow. Um, but again, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I'll have all your information here at the end of this from the survey. So I, uh, I could send a quick email out to everyone with uh, further contact information for myself. And uh, if anybody would like to see any one-on-one -on -one kind of demos of certain applications or things, feel free to let me know. We can get you scheduled in the same room and you know more specific, okay? Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for coming.